whenever a rapist, whenever any anti-social element looks as a Muslim, he should be terrified. We should terrify the anti-social element. That's what the Quran says in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 60. Cause terror in the hearts of the anti-social element. I know that today the word terrorist is commonly used for terrorizing an innocent human being. In this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. He should selectively terrorize the anti-social element. He should selectively terrorize the thief, the robber, the rapist. Whenever any anti-social element looks at the Muslim, he should be terrified. Then only can we have peace in this world. Many a times, two different labels are given for the same activity of that same individual. About 60, 70 years ago, before India got its freedom, the country where I come from, the Britishers were ruling India. There were many Indians who were fighting for the freedom of the country. These people, by the British government, they were called as terrorists. But the common Indians, we call them as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. If you agree with the view of the British government that they had a right to rule over India, then you have to call these people as terrorists. But if you agree with the view of the common Indians that the Britishers came to India to do business, they have no right to rule over us, then you'll have to call these people as patriots, as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. And such examples, you can give multiple such examples in world history. A Dai should know if there are many examples, which example should you use where? So that he understands. Because Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, Come to common terms as us and you. The moment the Indians, when they call Muslim terrorists, and when I give this example, then they understand the picture better. Two months back, I was in UK, after the bomb blast, after 7th of July. There was supposed to be a grand conference. Tony Blair, Jack Traw supposed to come. Last moment, they didn't come. But the chief of police was there, the mayor was there. And there also I used example. But my examples were different. I said that in the 18th century, we know of the American Revolution. The Britishers were ruling America. There were many Americans who were fighting for the freedom. In 1776, they got the freedom. And top of the line were Benjamin Franklin, George Washington. They were called as terrorist number one by the British government. The person who was terrorist number one, George Washington, later on, he becomes the president of USA. Imagine terrorist number one becomes the president of USA. And he is an example for all the presidents to follow, including George Bush. <laughs> this is media. Terrorist number one becomes the president of the country which we look up upon. USA. USA's name comes the most advanced country in the world. Who was the person who was the first president? A terrorist. We have the example of Nelson Mandela. Before new South Africa was formed, South Africa was relieved from the white apartheid government. Nelson Mandela, by the white apartheid government, he was imprisoned for 25 years in Robben Islands. He was called as terrorist number one. Later on, when South Africa gets its freedom from the white apartheid government, he is made the president of new South Africa. And later on, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. <laughs> and he doesn't get a Nobel Prize for Peace for a new activity. Not that he was a terrorist first and then he did some good activities and a bad person has become a good person. No, no. For the same activity for which he was called a terrorist, after a few years, he gets a Nobel Prize for Peace. It is weird. Same activity for which he was imprisoned for 25 years. He was called as terrorist for the same activity later on, he gets the Nobel Prize for Peace. So this is how the media can convert day into night, black into white, hero into a villain, and a villain into a hero. 
in short whoever is in power whatever he says turns out to be the gospel truth we know when hitler was invading europe many countries were resisting even france they resisted these french people by the german they were called as terrorists this is how the media paints a picture unfortunately we muslims unfortunately we are way behind we should know how to turn the tables over and today the word which is maximum misunderstood in islam it is the word jihad not only is there misconception amongst the non muslims regarding the word jihad there is even a misconception amongst many muslims regarding the arabic word jihad many people think that any war fought by any muslim for any reason whether it be for power whether it be for personal gain whether it be for money it is called as jihad any war fought by any muslim for any reason whether it be for power for personal gain for money is not called as jihad jihad is an arabic word coming from the word jahada which means to strive which means to struggle in islamic context it means to strive and struggle against one's own evil inclination it also means to strive and struggle to make the society better it also means to strive and struggle in the battlefield in self defense it also includes to strive and struggle against oppression jihad basically means to strive and struggle if a student is striving and struggling to pass the examination it means he is doing jihad so jihad basically means to strive and struggle and many of the non muslims they translate the word jihad into english as holy war and unfortunately many so called muslim scholars in inverted commas even they translate jihad as holy war holy war in arabic the word if you want to translate holy war into arabic it is harbun muqaddasa the word harbun muqaddasa does not exist anywhere in the quran it does not exist anywhere in any of the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this word holy war was first used to describe the crusaders when the crusaders in the name of christianity they killed thousands of people they termed it as a holy war and today they are using that word for the muslims see how the media is first they used the word fundamentalist for the christians now they use it for the muslims holy war was used for the christian crusaders now they use it for the muslims saying jihad is holy war jihad basically means to strive and struggle and every muslim should be a dai a beloved prophet said it's a hadith of sai bukhari balli go anni walo aya propagate even if you know one verse you can't say no i will wait till i become like sheik ahmed didad and then start doing dawa the time will never come even if you know one verse of islam as long as you know it correctly it's your duty to propagate it every muslim should be a dai the problem is we aren't following the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala that's the reason we are in this state allah says he will not help people who will not help themselves who is to blame we are to blame and after 911 it has reached epidemic levels maligning islam and i had gone to usa 2 years back in october 2003 i had gone to los angeles and was prepared wearing a tie and a coat beard cap kufi i was prepared that i will be questioned a dai has to be prepared so when i went to the immigration oh beard cap or go for inquiry i was prepared they asked me why have you come here i said i'm getting an award award for what i said award for humanity there's an organization in los angeles in usa giving me an award for humanity what work have you done 